This one, I'll use it. What? Say that again? Yeah. Okay. But I won't be able to talk right away on that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And now let's have an arrowhead welcome for Buccaneers head coach John McKay, his staff, and the balance of the Buccaneers squad. You want me to mention Williams? Or does it not matter to you? It doesn't matter to me. Yeah, if you want. I mean, yeah. That's all right with you. Yeah. I think that works pretty good with him. Yeah. The setting it up. The way you do that is good. So then what you do is you give him something. Something to think about. Thank you. You too. Thank Mike. you. You, you too, too Thank John you. and Ed. You too, Ed. Have a good game, baby. First of many, I That's hope. It. Me too. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. Speak up, on uh, John. You're gonna you're gonna have to hit me a little loud on the audio because of this thing. That's what you want. <laughs> opposites, right? Complete opposites. With this uh, earpiece, you're going to have to say you're on or go loud, just so I know. You'll be there ready to show me, right, as I get out of the seat, and not before. Right. Stand by. who's getting better and better. This was the big 55-yard touchdown pass to Speedy Kevin House, which helped defeat division defending champion Vikings. But it was veteran safety Neil Coles who made the game-saving play with this interception galloping 82 yards for the TD, sealing the Bucks' opening night victory. Meanwhile, quarterback Bill Kenny sparked Kansas City with this 53-yard scoring strike to number 88, Carlos Carson, as the Chiefs shot the fading Pittsburgh Steelers. But Kansas City needed a clutch play by linebacker Thomas Howard, who picked up the loose ball on a big blitz and went all the way for a score. So both the Bucks and the Chiefs are understandably sky high for this afternoon's opening game. CBS Sports presents the National Football League. Today, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against the Kansas City Chiefs. 
So it's the Bucks and the Chiefs at Arrowhead Stadium, the 10th anniversary of this beautiful place. As we welcome you, everyone, I'm Dick Stockton along with Jim Hill. And, yes, they're both young. They both have good defenses. They both won last week. But offense is still a question mark. And Tampa Bay, of course, has Doug Williams, and it starts with him. It certainly does. Williams ran for and threw a touchdown pass last week. But I think he's under a lot of pressure because of the ineffective play of his offensive line. However, one of the big keys for this game will be Tampa Bay using three wide receivers and going to the veteran tight end Jimmy Giles and taking advantage of the inexperience of Lloyd Burris, the starting rookie strong safety for Kansas City. Jim McKay, John McKay is always looking for those little breaks in the other ball club, and I think he sees it there. Kansas City, on the other hand, despite the, a lot of points against Pittsburgh, is really playing an offense in a different era. All they do is run. That's right. 37 points against Pittsburgh could be a little misleading because most of those points came after Steeler turnovers. However, because Kansas City likes to run and pass when they are supposed to, gaining four and a half yards in first down situations is really crucial for them to win. So, Jim, the team that has the offense today is really going to have the edge because they both have good defensive teams and we're down on the field getting set for the opening kickoff now here at Arrowhead Stadium as we said the 10th anniversary Tampa Bay has won the toss they've elected to receive and James Owen will be deep and Lowry will kick off Everybody up for the kickoff. there is Nick Lowry an outstanding kicker after a lot of clubs passed on him in the last couple of years. And when we uh, get the kickoff, we're also going to get a surprise because they're going to let go a few hundred balloons here. As you look at Owens, number 26, who is acquired by Tampa Bay from San Francisco, and Gary Davis, number 28, with him. So the Kansas City Chiefs in the red or the dark uniforms and Tampa Bay in the white. Both teams are 1-0. and They beat tough ball clubs starting the season. They're both at the same level of competition. Last year, Tampa Bay 6-10 and after the division championship effort the year before. Kansas City 8-8, eight and eight, their best in several years. Underway in Kansas City. And they go to Owens. And a good kick in the end zone. And Tampa Bay will take it at the 20-yard line. And let's take a look now at the Tampa Bay Buccaneer offense. You heard Jim Hill talk about Doug Williams. They have the rookie James Wilder at fullback. And, of course, he played at the University of Missouri. Ricky Bell alternates with Equit. And when they decide to go deep, they have the speed with the wide receivers, and they have good hands to strike from anywhere on the field. And that should be Jones instead of Marshall, the offensive line, and they've been injury plagued. They certainly have, and it's a big test for them this afternoon to really come together and try and move out this pretty good uh, defensive unit for Kansas City. And talking about Kansas City's defense, both teams used a 3-4, and it's going to be Bell and Still, two outstanding defensive ends for the Kansas City Chiefs, and Art Still, of course, an all-pro. We'll be taking a look at him. So it's first and 10 at the 20 yard line Wilder 32 and Ricky Bell 42 of the setbacks tailback is Bell and Ricky Bell goes up the middle and gets nothing so we knew we'd want to test that defensive line and the Chiefs have Bell Parrish and Art Still as the front three Bell injured most of last year the linebackers are sparked by number 59, Gary Spaney. Charles Jackson is in the starting lineup this afternoon, number 51, in place of Whitney Paul. And the secondary, sparked by Gary Barbaro, the free safety, but Lloyd Burris is the man they're going to work on, as Jim pointed out at the top, number 34. Gain of one, second and nine at the 21-yard line, and the pitch goes to Ricky Bell. Bell going outside, and good pursuit. Gary Spaney, superb on the run, and the best linebacker for the Chiefs makes the stop, and so they're getting naught with the run so far. And I think they will not be able to run wide against Kansas City because of the 3-4 alignment. You have two linebackers sitting up on the outside. Their job primarily is to turn the play inside or string it out and let the pursuit come from inside out and make the tackle, and that's what happened then. Paul Dombrowski, number 46, has come in in a nickel back as is a third and 11 now for Doug Williams. So... Tampa Bay trying to get something on the run. Puts more pressure on Doug, and he's in a passing situation. At the 19-yard line out of the shotgun, and an inside run to Ricky Bell. Bell gets a couple, and that's all. So Kansas City even more aroused now after stopping Tampa Bay Cole and that series. And I think mostly because they did it back in their own end of the field, holding Tampa Bay in their own end of the field. A tremendous boost for their defensive unit. So it's fourth down. Penalty 
Offside against Tampa Bay was declined naturally by Kansas City and so Tom Blanchard is in to punt now for the Buccaneers the 11 year veteran he established a personal high averaged more than 47 yards a kick in the opening game against Minnesota Tom Blanchard 32 years old and deep for Kansas City is J.T. Smith made the Pro Bowl based on his punt returns averaged 14 and a half yards bad snap from center and Blanchard's in trouble. for the Kansas City Chiefs. First of all there's a bad snap. Blanchard having a tough time getting the ball the number 24 Gary Green who is an expert at blocking punts extra points and field goals comes in. He takes a shot at him and by that time he swarmed under by three or four Chiefs and now Kansas City has the ball in excellent position now. So John McKay has got to be muttering to himself now as the Chiefs have it first and ten on Tampa Bay's 13 yard line. Bill Kenny the quarterback James Hadnot and Ted Knight. McKnight are the running backs and here is McKnight. McKnight gets inside the 10 yard line fumble and does Tampa Bay have it again the Buccaneers feel they do and they say no the whistle had blown Bill Kohler thought he had recovered the ball on McKnight's bobble but it is still Kansas City ball and they move it up to the seventh. Ted McKnight number 22 and James had not 48 of the running backs. Henry Marshall starting in this game number 89 along with J.T. Smith 86 both had their best years last season. McKnight one of the best inside runners in pro football. Jack Rudney the key to the offensive line for Kansas City and it's a veteran group. Second and four on the eight yard line. There's McKnight down to the goal line. No touchdown. It is a touchdown for McKnight. He got in there. Ted McKnight carries twice and Kansas City has gone in to score following a bobbled snap pressure by Gary Green from the secondary and the Chiefs are in front six to nothing. Once again talking about McKnight being one of the best inside runners in pro football going against Tampa Bay you have to run at angles and give your offensive back the opportunity to run inside or outside and with Knight getting the good blocking up front he dives in for the score. So McKnight gained 59 yards last week and scored a touchdown against the Steelers now has two scores Nick Lowry's kick is up and good Bob Grupp's hold and the Chiefs have scored early taking advantage of a bobble snap on a punt and it's seven to nothing in favor of Kansas City with a lot of time remaining in this first quarter. It began life as an American war hero and it's still serving to this day the legendary Jeep vehicle 40 years over a million owners 10 billion miles taking its place in every sector of American life and now with the highest gas mileage of any American made four wheeler Jeep CJ what vehicle has better withstood the ultimate test of a legend the test of time from Jeep Corporation of American Motors you know, baseball is the same in Japan as it is in America. You play nine innings. Three strikes and you're out. Well, sure, And after the game, there's nothing like a beer. And when Numa's in town, I treat him to light beer from Miller because it tastes great. Mmm, Yeah, I know it's less filling, but we drink it because it tastes great. Listen, Numa, it tastes great. All right, it's less filling. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer. And Karindao! Nick Lowry will kick off the Chiefs lead at seven to nothing and James Owens who is a hurdler number twenty six is back deep in front of him is Gary Davis number twenty eight. Two minutes and twenty seconds gone by in the first quarter and moving up at the eight yard line is Owens. James Owens trying to get a burst of speed and he's tackled from behind at the twenty five yard line by Dave Klug. So Tampa Bay has it first and ten now. Doug Williams coming out. Tampa Bay tried to run at Kansas City in the first series and it failed. It certainly did and it was a tremendous boost for the defensive unit of Kansas City because they held Tampa Bay got a score on the board and now they really have something to work with out there. Kevin House and Gordon Jones both split to the right. 
Jones in the slot back at the 26 yard line. In motion goes Jones. And Williams will go to the air. And the screen pass out to Ricky Bell. The swing pass to Bell out of bounds at the 31 yard line. He'll be short of a first down by about five yards. Ricky Bell on the receiving end. And this is one of the things that Bell has to do in order to have a good year to offset the uh, bad year he had last season. He has to be able to come out of the backfield and catch the ball. He was a little upset and preseason he asked to be traded. However they've smoothed out all those differences and now he's all set to go this year. He was a workhorse carrying 11 times against the Vikings last week. Now Kevin House the speedster is wide to the right. Second and five at the 31. The tailback is Bell. James Wilder is the up back, number 32. Bell again, and Bell had a great juke and got to the 35-yard line, close to a first down, short by a half a yard, and Gary Spaney, number 59, makes the tackle. Kansas City on defense, their linebackers are out of the 3-4. Their four linebackers have not played well throughout the course of the preseason. And this is going to be a good test for them because the running backs for Tampa Bay run extremely hard. You saw Ray Snell number 72 come in the game and John McKay is alternating guards bringing in the plays last week because of injuries to the offensive line it was Ricky Bell and Equid who brought in the plays. So it is a first down at the 36 yard line as House goes in motion. Pitch goes to Bell. Bell trying to turn the corner. Runs out of bounds at the 38 39 yard line tackle made by Gary Green who happens to be Jim Hill's cousin number 24 and a good defensive back he is as a matter of fact I've been reading articles where they say he's one of the best cover men in all of pro football so we'll get a chance to see exactly how good he is this afternoon. Well we saw him put the pressure on Blanchard on the bad snap Gary Green uh, who was a first round draft choice out of Baylor for the Kansas City Chiefs and a most versatile performer. And the only person last year in the NFL to block an extra point field goal and a punt. He's a marked man on special teams. Second and seven at the 39 yard line. Every running play has been carried by Ricky Bell so far. Same story. Runs into the center of the line. Charles Jackson, number 51, the right outside linebacker who replaced Whitney Paul had help from Ken Kramer number 91 the nose tackle. It appears now that Tampa Bay is testing out the inside of uh, Kansas City's defensive line Art still who has a bad hand they want to see how strong he really is and they're running at the bubble and by I mean the bubble they're running at the uncovered men are running at the guard positions. So now that Kansas City making the adjustments on defense Dombrowski is in number 46 as a fifth defensive back and Don Parrish number 61 comes in as a fourth down lineman on third and five at the 41. Seven nothing Chiefs first quarter. Out of the shotgun. Williams to throw up the middle and he finds Kevin House. House is tackled immediately but I believe he has the first down. Let's see where they spot it. House was hit by Thomas Howard the linebacker. It is another Tampa Bay first down. Kevin House second year from Southern Illinois. Had a great finish last year and led his club with three receptions last week. Here's a good example of how Doug Williams has really progressed in his short term in the National Football League. When Doug was uh, first came up early in his career a short pass like that he would have really rifled across the field and maybe would have been dropped. Now he has that fine touch and he's laying it in there just right. Jerry Eckwood number 43 replaces Ricky Bell and he's awfully tough coming out of the backfield on pass plays. He's got good speed first and ten and here is Eckwood. He's getting a block from Greg Roberts but nothing doing and Charles Jackson showing why he has won a starting job with help from Gary Barbaro coming from free safety and Kansas City is just doing a number on Tampa Bay's running attack. Well this is what I was talking about uh, Dick as far as running against the three four defense and trying to get outside you have linebackers who are just waiting out there to turn the play back in. Now you see Jackson comes up and he turns the play in. You want to make the uh, ball carry run laterally as long as possible and wait for the pursuit. If you're Tampa Bay how would you attack this defense. If I'm Tampa Bay you have to run at angles and you have to start working on a, on on their defensive secondary just a little bit. Three wide receivers in the lineup right now. One setback is Eckwood and Williams under pressure tosses and hit immediately. Frank Montemolina makes the stop on a pass intended for Jerry Eckwood coming out of the backfield. Montemolina was the man who came in and hit Terry Bradshaw creating the fumble. A key play last week when Howard picked it up and ran for the touchdown. 
and a hit like that one can really ignite an entire not only an entire defensive unit it can ignite an entire football team Doug's back in the pocket feels just a little bit of pressure but watch the lick that comes up we don't see it now maybe we'll see it a little bit later but I tell you the whole football team for Kansas City is fired up now there are four men set in wide receiving positions right now out of the shotgun it is third and 12 at the 44 the pass to Kevin House is complete for a first down in the Kansas City territory at the 43 yard line Gary Green makes the stop on Kevin House who last year caught 23 of his 24 passes in the last four games. Williams back in the shotgun and it gives him an extra second and a half to look over the entire defense and by Kansas City only rushing three men and Ca Tampa Bay having five five should always block three and run short crossing patterns. Here's a look at uh, house again running the crossing pattern right across the middle of the field and making the good catch. First and ten now Tampa Bay at Kansas City's forty one in motion is Jerry Eckwood and the pitch and a bobble by Ricky Bell and the Chiefs swarm in on him Charles Jackson and some of his friends come on and he had some help by Gary Spaney so a bobble by Ricky Bell and a loss on the play for Tampa Bay once again the pursuit of Kansas City on defense is really amazing what you like to look at is see how many red jerseys are around the ball carrier when he goes down you want as many as possible there are four red jerseys from Kansas City around the ball carrier Bell then. Eckwood goes out James Wilder the rookie number 32 comes in the game loss of four it'll be second and 14 on the 45 house goes wide right number 89 Gordon Jones 84 split to the left here comes the blitz Doug Williams and it's deflected by Don Parrish the nose tackle and it was number 54. Manu Maliona, who came in on the blitz to cause problems for Doug Williams. So Tampa Bay now faces a third down situation. They are two of three in third down plays, and you're looking at Manu Maliona from Samoa. Kansas City on defense is very young and somewhat inexperienced but they make up for it with their tremendous hustle defensive linemen going over blocking passes. That's a great great individual effort. Nickel defense Dombrowski 46 the fifth back four down lineman third and 14 at the 45 out of the shotgun Williams is going for house and the pass is overthrown covered on the play by Gary Green so it'll be fourth down and Blanchard will come into punch so Doug Williams who's getting better and better each year not forcing as much overthrew. And this is good coverage here by Gary Green. He pins the, the receiver house to the sideline. The ball goes over his shoulder. But I noticed how Jimmy Giles was wide open going across the middle. You talked about trying to take advantage of the rookie Burris as you look at Tom Blanchard who wasn't able to get off the last kick. Deep for Kansas City is J.T. Smith. Made the Pro Bowl last year as a punt returner. Dombrowski is the up back at the 20. Low kick and could be a return here for Smith. And Smith was stopped by number 44, Billy Caesar. He gets around Caesar. I think he picks up a bundle on that return. What? 11 yard return following a 28 yard punt by Blanchard. 7.22 remaining in the first quarter. Kansas City is in front. Prove Haviland Supreme gives cars engine protection up front. I know, but. Well, you should know. It delivered proven protection and punishing state trooper testing. Yeah, but. Where's the rest of my car? Yeah. Here it comes. To prove Texaco's Haviland Supreme delivered improved mileage, too. Up front protection backed by improved mileage. That's Haviland Supreme. Do me a favor. I know. Prove how good Haviland is in the next county, huh? Get the twin action Norelco Rototrack rechargeable razor. Inside three floating heads, twin action grips and raises hair up, then razors hair off closer than ever without mix and cuts or soap and water. 
the twin action Norelco Rototract rechargeable. Because for close shaves, there's no action like twin action. <laughs> Catch the love bug on the premiere of Walt Disney with Dean Jones and Michelle Lee. It's madcap fun Saturday, September 26th on Walt Disney. Kansas City first and 10 on the 23 yard line. Rodney is the veteran of this club centering over Bill Kenny his third year from Northern Colorado and a great story James Hartman. The big fullback from Texas Tech goes off tackle and gets close to the 30 yard line. Tackle by Dave Lewis the outside linebacker number 57 and you talk about some outstanding linebackers. They're all good. Cecil Johnson was moved inside with Hugh Green's arrival. We'll be seeing a lot of Hugh Green 53. David Lewis had some personal problems back with the club and doing well. And the linebackers really want to get back to that nasty attitude that they had a couple of years ago when they led the lead. They're only good when they're aggressive and swarming. Second and four at the 29. Kansas City, a team that runs. Play action pass. Kenny in trouble. Fires at McKnight in the backfield. McKnight directing traffic. Finds an opening. And he's tripped up, and he had the opening. Tripped up at the 30 yard line by Richard Wood. And if he had gotten by Wood, he might have had clear sailing ahead. And one of the great things about this play for Kansas City is that it looked like McKnight may have been dropped for a loss. Now he has tremendous speed, and Kenny does an excellent job of throwing the ball and scrambling around. But watch how McKnight gets away from people, starts directing traffic there himself, and it's only the arm tackle of Richard Wood that really stops him from scoring. Two yards short of a first down, it'll be third and two. Bill Kenny who has quarterback Kansas City to three victories in his four starts two last year and of course the win over Pittsburgh last week very smart quarterback for a relatively inexperienced one McKnight close to a first down Dave Logan the nose tackle makes the play up the middle. And we've noticed so far, Dick, how Kansas City has tried to stay away from Leroy Selman, the right defensive end for Tampa Bay, because he, as far as Tampa Bay is concerned, he is the man on their defensive unit. Selman, of course, has had some tendonitis on the knee, maybe handling a little gingerly in this game. He had two sacks against the Vikings last week, but he is the man they have to watch, and he's been double teamed, even triple teamed at times certainly has and that's just a tremendous tribute to him because when you put two men on him out of a three man defensive line naturally that's going to help someone else but still time in and time out he manages to put pressure on the quarterback they are short of a first down by that much so it is fourth down as Selman and the defensive unit goes off the field and we're going to see Bob Grupp punt for the first time. Very good kicking team for Kansas City. Bob Grupp will punt. Averaged over 39 yards. T.O. Bell, a former Pittsburgh Steeler, who is on this club because of his special teams abilities, is standing at the 25. 5.20 remaining first quarter. Dick Stockton and Jim Hill here at Arrowhead Stadium, where it was 82 degrees and humid. T.O. Bell coming up and slides and is down at the 42 yard line. So Tampa Bay has some good field position following that kick and the Buccaneers will go on offense. So Kansas City taking advantage of an early mistake holding on to their lead. You know people like me we're young ambitious. These are the uniforms we wear at work. But these are the uniforms we wear when we serve part time in the National Guard and the reserves. You see in the Guard and reserves you earn extra money. So you not only serve your country you serve yourself. Yet while you serve you can live at home and keep your full time job. Because in the Guard and reserves you don't have to give up one life to live another. The National Guard and the reserves talk to your local recruiter. The Toyota Celica GT isn't a sporty car, it's two sporty cars. It's a Celica GT liftback with fold-down seats, a hatch that opens to cavernous space, and the Celica GT coupe with room for four plus a trunk. The Toyota Celica GT, it's a sporty car, and it's a sporty car. Oh, what a feeling! Celica! Toyota! 
Stay with CBS Sports following the game for the men's finals of the United States Open Tennis Championships. Will Bjorn Borg finally break the hold that John McEnroe has on Borg? McEnroe looking for his third straight. Should be another classic U.S. Open final. First and ten at the 41-yard line for Tampa Bay. Trailing 7-0. Eckwood and Bell in the backfield. Pass is complete to Jimmy Giles. And so, for the first time, Tampa Bay taking advantage of the rookie strong safety Lloyd Burris, the third round draft pick from Maryland, and Giles was open. And this is one of the things that Tampa Bay must continue to do throughout the course of the afternoon. Giles really doesn't get hit that much at the line of scrimmage by the linebacker, which he should, and that's what makes his release to the inside so easy. And now Burris comes over, he gets a little bit of help, but this could be a long afternoon for that young man. 25 yard pickup, and Giles, you know, is one of the better receivers for a tight end. First and 10 at the 35 yard line. Eckwood and Wilder are the running backs for Doug Williams. And here's Jerry Eckwood looking for a hole and he's upended. Gary Spaney, fourth year from Kansas State, came in and upended Eckwood. But Jimmy Giles can also block, can he? He certainly can. We saw him catch a pass. Now watch him go to work and knocking the defensive lineman still right down on the line of scrimmage. And like we said, they want to work on Art Steele. They want to see exactly how strong and if his hand, his right hand there, is completely healthy and if he can grab people and move around. T.O. Bell has come in, and he's playing the slot. Three wide receivers now with House and Jones, and Eckwood is the only setback. Second and eight at the 33-yard line, and the quick look and pass to House, who's hit and then gets a few more yards. So Kevin House was hit first by Lloyd Burris and then managed to get forward to the 17-yard line, and another Tampa Bay first down. So Burris uh, didn't make the tackle as he should have. And once again, he's going to get a complete indoctrination into the National Football League this afternoon. One of the things that he's going to have to do when he's out there by himself is just to hang on and pull the receiver down any way he can. Ricky Bell returns to the game for the Bucks, and Don Kramer, number 91, comes in. Ken Kramer, number 91, in for Kansas City. First and 10 at the 17-yard line. Bell. Camp Dent, the left side of the Kansas City defensive wall, gets to the 15-yard line. Gain of about two. And now Tampa Bay Dick is getting off the ball just a little bit better and moving people around, allowing the running backs to pick their own holes. Surprising Packers. 7-0 and surprising New Orleans with an early lead over Los Angeles. So two of the favorites in L.A. and Atlanta on the short end of first quarter scores. Winding down to the three-minute mark here in the first quarter at Kansas City. Gordon Jones and T.O. Bell split to the left, house to the right, second and seven at the 14-yard line. Williams to throw. He's under pressure, and his pass is complete to the five-yard line. T.O. Bell with his first reception. Makes the catch. Lloyd Burris hit him right there. So it is a first and goal inside the five. What Tampa Bay is doing now is that they're continuing to work on Burris, and Kansas City has put Burris out on a wide receiver. They're double covering uh, Jimmy Johns with two uh, linebackers, and that makes it pretty difficult for a young man like Burris, the first year in the National Football League, to move around quite a bit and to cover two or three receivers in the opening of the series. First and goal at the four. Tampa Bay threatening. Eckwood, not much. Penalty marker down. Game has been relatively free of flags here in the first quarter, but we have a penalty now, and the preliminary signal is against Kansas City. Encroachment. Defense, Eddie. Encroachment against Tampa Bay was the signal. I thought the preliminary signal was against Kansas City. Encroachment defense half the distance first down. So it is still first down as they move half the distance now. Doug Williams from Grambling number one draft choice in 78. Moving this club started out with good field position. He's six of nine for 72 yards through the air. And this is an area where the defensive linebackers for Kansas City must play well. Two tight ends as Jim Obradovich, number 86, joins Jimmy Giles at tight end. First and goal at the two. Pitch goes to Wilder. And Wilder from Missouri is in for the touchdown. And it's got to be a pleasing moment 
for the second round draft choice from Missouri James Wilder who scores his first NFL touchdown to bring Tampa Bay to within one point of Kansas City pretty good blocking up front however the speed of Wilder now watch him run and he's as he keeps his feet moving that's the most important thing for a running back you see him start to pick his feet up just a little bit higher and uh, came over that gave off with a forearm shiver goes in for the score and he's going to be a good running back here's another example of it watch him as he picks his feet up and goes in Ray Snell with a good block that got him over the top and now the point after veteran Garo Yepremian. And the kick is good, and so we have a tie game. Garo Yepremian had the flu this week and uh, wasn't kicking very deep on kickoffs, but he adds the point after, and we have a tie game with 2.08 remaining in the first quarter. Looking for the right fields to invest in, and the right investments in those fields can be frustrating. That's why Merrill Lynch does the groundwork with research. To seek out the best investments, Merrill Lynch brought together the best researchers. And it is turning up the unseen or overlooked that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. Clean water, more precious to life than oil, but it too is becoming scarce because of man's pollution. But now there's something that's helping to clean water all over the world. A unique wastewater treatment system made possible by this special plastic developed by Phillips Petroleum. There are other energy sources besides oil, but there's no substitute for water. Caring for your car and more, that's performance from Phillips Petroleum. For outstanding lead actor in a drama series, the winner is... Who will be the winner? Share the live excitement and entertainment. The 33rd Annual Emmy Awards, Sunday. So Gary Premian, in his 14th year, will be kicking off to Carlos Carson, who is on the receiving end of that touchdown pass from Kenny last week. This is a short kick, and Carson at the five-yard line. He's the fastest receiver on this team, but he runs into a crowd, and he stopped at the 20-yard line. John Holt, a rookie from West Texas State, one of those in on the play. So Kansas City starting on offense first and 10, and Bill Kenny. He had a 300 yard game against Baltimore and you know it seems that despite the conservative aspect of the Chiefs they seem to score a lot of points when he plays. They certainly do but of course they get a lot of uh, turnovers from their special teams and of course special teams play so much a vital part of any football game but Bill Kinney is a good quarterback and with more experience he's going to get better. Originally a 12th round draft choice by Miami traded to Washington picked up by Kansas City as a free agent. In motion is J.T. Smith. Joe Delaney, the rookie, is in the ball game. We'll be seeing a lot of him. And David Lewis deflected that pass. David Lewis storming in. He's big at 6-4, and he batted that pass thrown by Bill Kenny, so it'll be second down. One of the things that uh, you can do from a 3-4 alignment is even though you only have three down linemen, you can blitz one of your linebackers from either one of those four spots. And that's what happens at this particular time as David Lewis comes in from the left uh, linebacker spot and knocks the ball down. You know, where it's unusual to see a pass attempt by Kansas City on first down, and in two running plays on first down, they gain six yards. So here's Delaney. Delaney to the 24 yard line where he's stopped by David Lewis once again and we're getting our first look at the second round draft choice from Northwest Louisiana who the Chiefs say is their best breakaway threat since the days of Mike Garrett. And that's exactly what they need because if you're going to have and try and establish a running game and depend on running as much as the Chiefs want to then you must have that breakaway threat. Third and six. Now we'll see the nickel defense. In the secondary, Billy Caesar, number 44, comes in. Delaney averaged nearly five yards a carry last week. Under pressure, Kenny throws it away. Tremendous pressure coming in there by Bill Kohler, the left defensive end, who put a lot of pressure on Steve Dills of the Vikings last week. So it's fourth down punting. And one of the things that we're talking to the Chiefs uh, yesterday and talking about Bill Kenny is that he concentrates so much on his wide receivers and where he wants to throw the ball that sometimes he takes some tremendous shots from the defensive lineman. That time he took a pretty good lick, but throughout the course of the ball game, he may take some good ones. A pro ball player two years ago, Bob Grupp, a free agent from Duke, will be kicking to T.O. Bell at the 35 yard line. Right, 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 right. 
Good kick by Grubb. Bell at the 36 yard line. Now he's out. Just short of the 40 yard line. So that's where Tampa Bay will take over. A 39 yard kick by Grupp and a four yard return by Bell. This telecast is presented by authority of the National Football League and it's intended for the private use of our audience and any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Kansas City Chiefs and the National Football League is prohibited. This is Dick Stockton and Jim Hill here at Arrowhead Stadium on a beautiful afternoon in KC. 102 remaining in the first quarter and we're tied at seven. Ricky Bell 42 James Wilder 32 the back at the 39 Wilder doesn't make it to the 40 Charles Jackson coming up from linebacker along with Gary Spaney and Kansas City linebacker forcing the runs effectively so far their linebackers are playing exceptionally well this afternoon probably better than than what uh, Tampa Bay thought that they would. If you were rating the defensive teams before the game you'd have to say that Tampa Bay had the outstanding linebackers and that was the one weak point for Kansas City. T.O. Bell. Goes out of the game now as Wilder comes back in Paul Dombrowski is a fifth defensive back once more for Kansas City. It'll be second and nine out of the shotgun at the 40. Loops the pass. To Ricky Bell. Bell to the 45. Out of bounds at the 50. Has the first down. Lloyd Burris drove him out. Ricky Bell looking good so far and actually carrying most of the load for Tampa Bay as the Bucks have a first down at midfield. He certainly is. Now, Doug Williams does a beautiful job here of staying right in the pocket when there's danger and trouble all around him. See the red jerseys just going all around him there and Bell catching the ball in his hands, which is what you want your running backs to do. And you see how he sprints down the sideline before he gets really knocked out. Ricky is off to a good start this afternoon. Eight seconds remaining in this first quarter. Ricky Bell has carried eight times for nine yards, but has caught two passes for 16. Play action pass. Here comes a linebacker blitzing, but the pass is complete out of bounds. Maybe Gordon Jones on the far side of the field and another first down inside the 30 yard line. So despite the blitz, Doug Williams staying cool and calm hits Gordon Jones with a big strike. And this is one of the things that the Tampa Bay people are so happy with about Doug is that he is starting to pick up all these things and you see him completing the pass to Gordon Jones and Tampa Bay is on their way again. A 21 yard pickup and that's the end of the first quarter with the score 7-7. Boots, get in step. Hi, Hal. Hi, Mr. Van Patten. You know, I've got a big family in real life, too, so we need room when we drive. Well, our new Olds Delta 88 is one family car that didn't forget the family. And this one's a diesel, so it has the same kind of mileage as many smaller cars. Now, that's practical. Our new Olds Delta 88. In today's practical world, there's still room to do it with style. Dial it has national sports news. It's more than rational just to call national sports for all the latest reports. We're talking national sports news. We've got it all. 900. What a wonderful call. 900-976-1313. At 50 cents a call, I keep up on sports. Dial it. We're talking to you. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by the 1981 Oldsmobile Delta 88, the family car that didn't forget the family. And by Dingo Boots, the walk-in boots. 
Dick Stockton and Jim Hill back in the second quarter here at Kansas City with a score tied 7 7 and Tampa Bay threatening on Kansas City's 29. Doug Williams doing well, as you can see in the passing department so far. First and 10. In motion is Kevin House. And Jerry Eckwood cutting inside. Gets inside to about the 28, maybe a yard gain, and that's all. Art Still, number 67, who's the fear defensive end, the all pro, made the stop. And he has a bad left hand. And of course, knowing John McKay that the way some of us do, he likes to pick on certain people when he thinks they are hurt. And Art Still has a bad left hand. And they're going to try and see just exactly how strong he is because one of Still's strengths is him, his ability to go out and grab the uh, offensive lineman and shed him away and go in and make the tackle. And he was the only non San Diego Charger on the front line for the AFC in last year's Pro Bowl. Marv Levy, the coach of the Kansas City Chiefs in his fourth year, and a timeout is called by Tampa Bay. So not a bad move. A lot of people might think that why waste a timeout? But Tampa Bay, this is a big play for them, second and ten at the 29, and you don't know how many chances they're going to get. We'll be back. I can tell a real cowboy from the drugstore kind, clean across Texas. The way he wears his hat will tell you. And the beer that you drink is a surefire giveaway, too. A lot of us drink light beer from Miller. We love the taste, but we surely appreciate that it's got a third less calories than the regular kind. You see, you don't want to be filled up when you're out there punching doggies. Ain't that right, cowboy? I didn't punch that doggy. Light beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. With State Farm, you don't call a stranger when you need help. If you have a question about your family or personal insurance needs, or you want to report a claim, you call your State Farm agent. We're there to give you personal service. That's one of the big reasons so many families come to State Farm and stick with State Farm. It's the availability of the State Farm agent. Whether it's life, health, home, or car insurance, we're there to help. And like a good neighbor, State Farm So Williams was wise in calling that timeout, you feel, Jim? He certainly was. He saw something from Kansas City that he wasn't expecting. This is only his fourth year. Good decision. Call timeout. Out of the shotgun, second and ten at the 29-yard line. James Wilder in the ball game, replacing Bell. Williams under pressure, but he can run. And Williams, penalty marker down, 25. Williams runs out of bounds at the 10, and we have two penalty flags down. We might have a clip back there, but we'll wait and see. Normally, that's what the call may be. And apparently, that's it. And Charlie Hanna, who's banged up anyway, comes limping off the field for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Fred Wyant is the referee today. His crew of Tom Hensley, Ed Marion, Wilson Gossier, Dick Kantak, Vince Jacob, and Bob Wortman. And Hanna, who had that hamstring pull going in and did not play last week, back to the sideline. And he's also won. Uh, of two starting uh, tackles who were defensive linemen for Tampa Bay. So that's quite an adjustment on his part. Holding number 74. Second down. Gene Sanders, that other tackle who was switched from defense to offense, guilty of holding. So it is still second down, but it's now 20 to go for Tampa Bay. 7 7. Ted McKnight on an eight yard run following a fumble. Snap on a punt in the first quarter, and then Wilder went over from two to account for the scoring. We're in the first minute of the second quarter here. Shotgun again for Williams, who's looked good so far. Kansas City comes, and Williams trying to break through, and not this time, and he shuffles it. He shuffles the pass to Ricky Bell. Smart shovel pass, which is all right as long as it's back behind the line of scrimmage. Charles Jackson and Frank Case force the play. So Kansas City obviously is looking to blitz whenever they go the shotgun. That is really unbelievable by Doug Williams. Now, this is an example of why he is probably the most dangerous quarterback in the National Football League when he starts to scramble. Watch the athletic ability. He's so strong up top, he feels pressure coming from the right side, puts the ball in his left hand, and calmly and coolly tosses it out to Ricky Bill. A great play. Yeah, we know he can throw long and if he can think and get better and better along with experience and don't forget he was out a half a year he hasn't played that much he could be a gem in this league third and eight on the 27 Tampa Bay three of five and third down conversions and the pass is incomplete intended for Jerry Eckwood 
incomplete and Garo Yapremian will be coming in and good forcing play by nose tackle Ken Kramer number 91. Now that was a time when Williams threw the ball just a little bit too hard trying to get to Eckwood because Eckwood came from the left and went to the right. He was wide open. He had an offensive lineman in front of him but Doug threw it just a little bit too hard and a little bit in front of him and that's why it was incomplete. Garrow missed a 47 yarder last week against Minnesota. He is a well traveled kicker as you know. Started with Detroit nine years at Miami New Orleans and now with Tampa Bay. Tom Blanchard will hold for him and it'll be a 44 yard attempt for Garrow Yapremian. Tampa Bay outgained Kansas City in that first quarters. And Garrow's kick accurate and good just over the crossbar for Garrow Yapremian. So that's his first field goal of many. He's the ninth all time leading scorer in the league. Gets congratulations as he puts the Bucks in front 10 to 7. The Mercedes-Benz 240 diesel delivers 29 miles per gallon here and 33 miles per gallon on the highway. It also delivers this. The performance, the handling, the engineering genius that has always set the cars of Mercedes-Benz apart. The Mercedes-Benz 240 diesel, engineered like no other car in the world. Firing, coal cranking, dirt fighting, road handling, money saving, hard working AC Delco. You know, dirt can do more damage in there than it does out here. That's why it makes real good sense to use AC, oil and air filters, because they're one hard working solution to internal pollution. Hot firing, coal cranking, dirt fighting, road handling, money saving, hard working AC Delco. Wednesday, an Emmy-winning three-hour movie special. Richard Thomas, Patricia Neal, and Ernest Borgnine in All Quiet on the Western Front, Wednesday. If you look at the numbers, you think it's all Tampa Bay. Look at first downs, total yards, time of possession, and the fact that Kansas City's trailing by only three points is good for them, considering that they really haven't gotten unleashed yet. Yepremian kicking off. And going to the corner, they want to keep it away from Carlos Carson. And it's picked by the upback, Bill Jackson from Alabama. And Jackson gets to the 26-yard line before he is stopped by Gerald Carter, a wide receiver. So Kansas City will try to go on offense. And as we pointed out, and Jim made this clear at the outset, running on first down is important. Well, they did it twice, gained six yards each time. And then when they try to pass on first down, they came up empty. That's exactly right. And so right now, that's, they're kind of wondering what in the world is going on out there. They're going to have to get a little bit better effort from their offensive line. Their offensive linemen are going to have to fire off the ball, stick their head in the numbers of the defensive linemen for, Kansas, for Tampa Bay, and move them around a little bit. Kenny is one for three for just a single yard passing. Joe Delaney, number 37, is back there with James Hadnot, 48. Both wide receivers out to the left. And here's Delaney trying to get outside. Good pursuit. Bill Kohler, who had a, the gout. That was a problem. They didn't know what was bothering him. And he showed some superb pursuit there to get Delaney, who certainly can, can move. But great speed. The only question they had of him was, could he make it coming from the small school of Northwest Louisiana? But he was picked on the second round, and they have high hopes for him. Well, I think sometimes that's a big misnomer when you say someone comes from a small school and he can't play in the National Football League. Some of the biggest stars in pro football have come from the so-called small schools. Yeah, I think that's a myth now. I think it's been proven, as you point out. Second and seven at the 30. Kenny passing on second down. Up the middle. Incomplete. Pass was intended for the tight end Al Dixon and it wasn't a very pretty pass and Dixon wasn't really open Richard Wood defending on the play as you look at that last Tampa Bay scoring drive capped by the field goal and now we have a situation that is perfect of what we've been talking about earlier of why Kansas City must run and run well on first down it's third down now and about eight yards to go first down they only got a couple of yards out of it so even though they haven't been doing it in the past on first down situations maybe they should start and try and throw a little more. 
So Kenny knows that Tampa Bay's linebackers like to go deep and the backs do too. And he's looking for the short pass. He finds Delaney and Delaney looked up field and didn't catch the ball. Just a loss of concentration. And it'll be fourth down. That's one of the mistakes that most running backs make most young running backs make in the National Football League. They're out in the flat all open and by themselves and they have a tendency to try and take a little peep and see where that linebacker or defensive back is coming from so they can try and get away from it. And when you do that more times than not you're going to come away empty handed. Bob Grupp will punt. He has kicked twice. Thirty nine yards which is his longest and T.O. Bell is at the thirty one yard line. T.O. Bell had his problems with Pittsburgh during the preseason and when he came back Chuck Knoll says I don't want you here now if he kept left once he'll do it again. Good high kick by Grubb sends Bell back to the twenty five. And he gets to the thirty four and that's where the Bucks will go on offense. So a forty six yard punt by Bob Grubb in a ten yard return and you don't have to worry about special teams with Kansas City because that was Marv Levy's specialty under George Allen. IBM makes a text processor that's easy to use. It's as easy as blueberry pie. Easy because the IBM display writer shows you how to edit. It's as easy as pie. Check your spelling. It's as easy as pie. Do math. It's as easy as pi. And now, electronic filing and reports. The IBM Display Writer system. It's a piece of cake. The emphasis first is on quality. Because people, I think, are taking a closer look at the vehicle. I think everyone wants a quality product. At Ford Motor Company, quality is more than a priority. Quality is job one. We're trying to make a better product. And I think we are making a better product. Knowing that the customers are going to be pleased with our product is the main thing. Better and better, see what we've done. And Ford quality is job one. Steve Fuller on the sidelines. Arthroscopic knee surgery following an injury in the second quarter of the first preseason game, but he worked out this week. And they expect him back next week. Whether he starts or not, we don't know. But next week, the Chiefs go against the San Diego Chargers. First and 10 at the 35-yard line. 12:36 remaining first half. 10 to 7, Tampa Bay leading. And they overload the left side with receivers. But now House comes in motion the other way. Williams to throw. And out of the backfield is Wilder. And Williams drills it complete to Jerry Eckwood. And Eckwood inside the 35-yard line to the 32. Fumble on the play. Mano Maliona made the tackle on Eckwood, but I believe it's going to be down there in Tampa Bay ball. And Herb Christopher, who replaced Lloyd Burris, picked up the what he thought was a loose ball, but the whistle had blown. A 35-yard pickup, and Doug Williams had two receivers open. He had Wilder short, and he decided to go with Eckwood deeper. He certainly did. And one of the great things, or the best thing about that particular play, as far as Doug Williams is concerned, is that he was running to his left. He threw to his left, and he threw it sidearm, and he really rifled that thing in there. Theo Bell, number 83, in the game now. In the slot back, Ricky Bell, the lone setback. Play action. Williams in trouble, throws it down. And no flag. Kansas City calling for intentional grounding. And the new rule is that if you get the ball away just to avoid taking a loss, it's a penalty. And that's exactly what Don Parrish is saying. Loss of down. All right, they called it. Loss of down as well. So this hurts Tampa Bay. It's certain that's exactly right. The new rule as we talked about, as you talked about, Dick, there was no really a uh, Tampa Bay receiver around and this is a this is strictly a judgment call on the part of the referee and if in his judgment he feels that the quarterback throws the ball away to prevent a loss then it is intentional grounding John McKay only five coaches in the league have been in their jobs longer than John McKay it seems only like only yesterday he got to Tampa Bay from Southern Cal so it's second and ten at the thirty two Mike Bell had good pressure there. Eckwood thrown back to the 37 yard line by Mike Bell who's now starting to make his presence felt. Mike Bell 
played only a game and a half had a shoulder injury last year a number one draft choice a couple of years ago and the thing that allows him to make the tackle and get into the backfield so quick is that he was off the ball extremely fast he was watching the ball which is what defensive linemen have to do in order to make those kinds of good plays don't listen to the quarterback move when the ball moves they need that pressure by Bell and still on the two defensive end spots third and 15 at the 37 yard line out of the shotgun. They're going deep. House incomplete. Gary Green was step for step with Kevin House and a superb play by Gary Green who says you know what they're doing they're going on the other cornerback side Eric Harris I haven't had a chance to do my thing but I think today we're seeing it that was excellent coverage on the part of Gary Green a lot of teams in the National Football League stay away from him because he covers extremely well and we had a perfect example of it then he was step for step good coverage Tom Blanchard will kick 33 yard punt his only kick of the afternoon so far. He'll be look, looking to kill the ball inside the 20 and no return. J.T. Smith is deep. And it takes a Tampa Bay bounce and into the end zone for a touchback. So Blanchard wanted it to stay in. It didn't, and that's the way it goes with 10 minutes and 40 seconds remaining in the first half. And Tampa Bay on your premiums field goal has the three-point lead. Flanker does it down and out. The weak side linebacker blitzes. What's the nose guard do, huh? Huh? I don't know. Defense rests. <laughs> like beer from Miller. Everything you always wanted in a beer and less. A lot of homeowners insurance doesn't cover damage to dwellings from paint spills. Nationwide's elite homeowners insurance does. And it covers damage from a dozen other unusual accidents. All for only a few dollars more a month. Think of what it could save you. Elite Homeowners Insurance. It's just one part of Nationwide's blanket protection for your family and your business. Nationwide is on your side. Nationwide. Meet the oddest couple. You're an American. The two of us. You can't put anything over on the English. It's cultural clash when butler Peter Cook returns on The Two of Us, Monday. <laughs> Well, George Rogers scored a touchdown for New Orleans, but what is the matter with Los Angeles, Mr. Hill? From top to bottom, it is turning out to be a complete deterioration of the whole ball club. I guarantee you, if New Orleans wins this ball game, if they go in and win it, then they're going to be calling for a lot of people's jobs back in Los Angeles next week. That's well, sure. you may be in there. They may be calling you to suit it up again. No, 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 no. <laughs> First and 10 at the 20. Had not and McKnight the setbacks and in motion JT Smith for Kenny and then he turns around they use that formation against Pittsburgh last week Kenny has time out to Hadnot Hadnot bulls his way forward penalty marker down as he's tackled at the 24 yard line Neil Colsey came up from safety Kansas City trying to establish an offense and first down you know they did gain as I said six yards the first two tries and this is a holding call against the Chiefs. So a tough afternoon so far for Bill Kenny. And of course uh, you have Tampa Bay now. They are looking a little bit like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers that led the league in defense a couple of years ago. And that is by flying around and knocking people down and really being nasty out there because that's how you have to have your defensive people. Holding number 65. Tom Condon. Right guard. So now it's first and 20 at the 10 yard line. Very tough to go 90 yards these days on a drive. Kansas City comes out with three wide receivers. The tight end Al Dixon in the slot and a back move penalty marker down. One of the Kansas City backs who might have been had not took a step. Chiefs are playing a fine game defensively. They're stopping Tampa Bay's run cold. Bucks have had good field position to account for their two scores, but the Chiefs can't get it started on offense. Illegal motion, number 48, declined. Second down. Watch the lower right of your screen. There. There it is. James Hatton not moving. But of course, you know, an experienced quarterback can look around and if he has good peripheral vision, he can see that running back moving and he can hold up the snap cadence just a little bit and give him time to get back and get set. Meager numbers for Bill Kenny with ten and a half to play. 
And on a draw play, McKnight, another penalty marker down as McKnight to the 17 yard line. David Lewis from the strong side outside linebacking spot makes the tackle, but another flag now on second and 20. And Kansas City now penalized three straight plays. They're getting very frustrated. They're at their own end of the field. Tampa Bay is really flying around out there on defense and starting to just knock people down and not care, just hitting everything in the opposite color jersey. And when that happens, that usually puts a lot of pressure on an inexperienced young offensive line, and that's what's happening now. You know, the offensive line proved to be troublesome last year for the Chiefs. They lost their first four games with Herkenhoff and Rudney. The hands to the face, number 60. Herkenhoff holding on the play. He was out last year and uh, with a makeshift offensive line lost the first four games as Marv Levy on the sidelines wondering what's going on here. But they won eight of their last 12 with everyone intact. Had not carries gets nothing. David Logan comes up and now the opening day crowd. So cheerful just an hour ago a little unhappy. And the way it appears now if Kansas City really doesn't do something and get away from just running 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 all the time especially on first downs they're going to be frustrated throughout the the entire afternoon and also that's a big advantage for the defensive unit when they know you're going to run on certain situations and pass in certain situations they can really take off on you. Third down 25 at the five yard line Kenny in his end zone batted down at the line of scrimmage by David Logan. So Tampa Bay has been able to knock down a couple of pass attempts by Bill Kenny who's certainly not a small quarterback at 6 4 and Logan's wishing he maybe had that stick him that uh, Lester Hayes had last year but Jim that was almost a defensive lineman's dream David Logan now watch what the ball is going to hit him right in the middle of the hands right there and he knew that if he had caught that he would have been in for an easy six. Well Tampa Bay sitting pretty as Logan goes off the field. And Grupp will kick from the end of the end zone. And Theo Bell is at the 45 yard line of Kansas City. Any kind of a return, and the Buccaneers will be looking good. And the ball takes a Kansas City bounce. And what a break it is for the Chiefs as it dies at the 37 yard line. So Bob Grupp, and in a big kick, had nowhere to back up to. He was at the end of the line, and he gets Kansas City out of a hole, a 62 yard kick. For Bob Gruff. We want to remind you to stay with CBS Sports after the game. Could you ask for a better men's final in the U.S. Open Tennis Championships? Bjorn Borg and John McEnroe. What do you think? Oh, that's going to be a good one. And I know Borg would really like to get it McEnroe to break his string of victories at the championship. And also because uh, it was McEnroe who beat Borg at Wimbledon. Borg has never won the U.S. Open. Right after the game, join us. First and 10, 38 yard line. Wilder and Bell are the setbacks, and Kevin House is in motion for Doug Williams. Ricky Bell out of the backfield. Not a good pass for Bell, I don't believe. Little low. Should he get that? Well, anytime, usually when a ball touches your hands, you're supposed to catch it. However, that particular time it was just a little low as you mentioned and Bell has been working on catching the ball during the offseason and he has really improved and he's shown us already this afternoon. Benny Ricardo has kicked three field goals. George Rogers has his first NFL touchdown. But the story is the Los Angeles Rams are a team in trouble as they trail 16 nothing to the New Orleans Saints second quarter. We have 925 remaining in the first half 10 to 7 Tampa Bay leading the Kansas City Chiefs second and 10 at the 38. Williams has been able to throw and that pass is batted down. Art still incomplete art still a big 6 8 defensive end got his hand up there to knock down a Williams toss and I'll tell you you can't ask for anything more from the Chiefs defense so far Jim absolutely correct and the Chiefs can do so many things on defense it's the little things that really help a defensive uh, unit for instance sticking your hand up when you go in to rush the passer now you know that that Doug Williams is a big quarterback himself but Art still at six seven six eight he rushes in and when he sticks his hands up in the air well he's over seven feet tall himself. There it is from the end zone view. Now are there's Art sticking up that big right hand of his and really putting a lot of pressure on. Third and 10 at the 38. Doug Williams 10 of 18 for 145 yards. Up the middle. 
Incomplete, it was intended for Kevin House, and through his fingers, he had to leap for it. So it'll be fourth down as Gary Barbaro, the fine free safety covered and cheers for the Kansas City defense. Problem is, as we said at the outset, Jim Hill, the team that can move the ball is going to have the edge in this game. And so far, the Kansas City Chiefs have not been able to do it. So Tom Blanchard will be punting, and J.T. Smith will be deep at the 25-yard line. A low snap, but a good kick by Blanchard. Smith. He's on his way. Matt Singer is the only man between Smith and the goal line. And Smith is out of bounds at the 21. Turn on that punt by Blanchard. And that's why he's the best in the NFL in what he does. And the key to the whole thing, as far as JT Smith is concerned, is running the ball and running just as fast as you can and keeping your feet up, especially on this AstroTurf, because if you drag your feet a little bit, you will stumble and fall. Now, watch, he keeps his legs moving, and what happens is when he gets into traffic, he turns sideways, and when you turn sideways like that, it prevents a smaller target for people to hit. He broke four or five tackles, and that was about as pretty a punt return as you'll see. Have not is hemmed in and is lost. And the first down average for Kansas City is just under three yards, and so we knew that that wouldn't be enough, and they're foiled once more. Now, you see, now here's where you really don't take advantage of some of your offensive personnel. You just had a tremendous play by your special teams, running the ball back, putting you in excellent uh, position to possibly score. Why not put the ball in the air on first down, keep the pressure on the opposition? You're taking the air out of your own balloon. That's right. Second and 12 at the 23. And Kenny can throw. He's a pure drop back passer if given the opportunity. He's got it here. Receivers are covered for the moment. And the pass is drilled and complete to the 10 yard line. Stan Rome, former basketball player from Clemson at 6'5, made that low catch, a good catch by Stan. It was a good catch, but it was a great individual effort by uh, by Bill Kinney, who sets up in the pocket, feels pressure, and moves around, goes up to the line of scrimmage. All of a sudden, he sees the wide receiver and throws the ball in there. That's the kind of play they should have come up with on first down right after the special team's punt return. So they have a first down at the 11-yard line, and now three tight ends in the game. That was a 14. Yard play Al Dixon 84 Willie Scott the top draft choice from South Carolina 81 and Ed Beckman number 85 first and 10 at the 11 I would think this is a key drive for Kansas City Delaney or McKnight I should say thrown for a loss of four yards and Neil Colsey the savvy veteran who made that big interception against the Vikings read that perfectly. Kansas City has not been able to run wide against Tampa Bay and unless there is a complete breakdown as far as Tampa Bay is concerned they won't be able to because they're getting such good pursuit their linebackers are forcing well their secondary people are coming up so well and they've just shut it off altogether. And you know McKnight is not the man to go outside if you're going to go outside Delaney would be your best bet. Second and 12 at the 13 Dave Stalls number 65 takes over for a limping Leroy Selman at right defensive end Kenny to put it in the air again under pressure Kenny looking finding complete pass inside the five yard line Carlos Carson with a fine catch going up high in a crowd. So Carlos Carson from LSU who just performed at kickoff returns made a fine catch there and the little man went up between three defenders for Tampa Bay to pull the ball down. I say the little man he's only 5'10 but watch him go high in the air pull the ball down and with those swarming Buccaneers around that's a great catch on his part. J.T. Smith goes out wide left. This is a third and two third and two they can get a first down without getting a touchdown. Can Kansas City Kenny looking fire. Now they didn't score but they may be close to a first down J.T. Smith making the catch. They may have a first down. Let's see where they spot the ball with 543 remaining in the first half and Tampa Bay up 10 to 7. 
Now, this is sometimes how you have to attack a particular area. You see how the Chiefs are putting three men right in the corner of the end zone, one deep, one medium, one First short. And that particular time they came, they uh, completed the pass. John Holt came over for Tampa Bay to make the, uh, the tackle, and it's fourth down right now. They missed it by about a yard, so it's fourth and one, and they call a timeout wisely. And we'll be back to see what happens in a moment. Hi, my, my name's, name's Harry. Harry. We're, We're father, father and son. son. He's the father. I bought my new 1981 Toyota truck because it's tough. I bought my Toyota truck because it's low price. Yeah, he always looks for a bargain when it's his money. And you know dads. They always try to be so tough. Do you seriously think I don't try to get the most for my money? No, that's one reason you bought a tough truck, a Toyota. Right. You see, sometimes we do agree, but not often. Oh, 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 what a feeling. Tough truck. Toyota. Deadline. Saturday, September 26th at Sears. The Sears 48 battery is on sale. Next to the Die Hard, the best-selling replacement battery in America. Now only $49.99 with trade-in. Save $10. And while they last, 25% off at Sears. Weather Handler All-Season Steel Belted Radial Tires. Save 25%. As low as $29.75 per tire while they last. For great automotive values, you can count on Sears. So Marv Levy, who's a conservative coach, will go for the three-pointer to try to tie it up. Bob Grupp will hold for Lowry at the 10-yard line. Lowry was three for four last week. The only one he missed was a 54-yarder. 20-yard field goal is good, and we have a tie game. So a 20-yard field goal by Nick Lowry has tied the ball game up at 10 with five minutes and 30 seconds remaining in the first half well next week CBS Sports Saturday brings you great racing action Pleasant Colony is expected to continue his quest for horse of the year at the Marlboro Cup and next Sunday NFL doubleheader you'll see San Francisco at Atlanta Tampa Bay at Chicago Washington at St. Louis and Green Bay at Los Angeles check your local listing so it'll be a big weekend of sports next week on CBS you know Dick as I sit here and think about just what happened to uh, to Kansas City that punt return was really wasted. It was really wasted because when you get a good punt return like that and you only come away with three points on the scoreboard, the defense has really done their job. I mean, I've seen uh, teams in, in the preseason to go through the same kinds of situation, get down at that end of the field, and then go for it. But then in the regular season, they don't do it. What you're saying is, Jim, that if all things were equal and Kansas City had a, uh, an offense that they can count on to get move the ball X amount of times during the game, they can afford that field goal. But the fact is their offense is not really clicking today and you have to take advantage of every small chance you have because you don't know if you're going to get back down there. James Owens is deep. You saw him there number 26 and Nick Lowry will kick off here following the field goal by Lowry and Owens inside the five. He was a high hurdler competing the Olympics and a penalty marker is down and so is Owens at the 25 yard line. So we may have a clip down about the five yard line. Dave Klug number 55 makes the tackle for Kansas City. Ed Beckman is talking to the official. So Owens on that return. Tampa Bay has the ball first and ten and we'll check it out from Fred Wyatt. John McKay said I'd rather get one long pass play than a lot of little ones. Going to set the Bucks way back. Number 64, illegal hit in the back from the rear. Longest punt return in history against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. 50 yards by J.T. Smith set up that drive. Five plays, but Jim Hill pointed out they came away with three. James Wilder and Ricky Bell are the setbacks first and ten at the eight yard line here's a chance for Kansas City's defense to do something and Wilder going wide they meet him at about the ten yard line so Kansas City continues to shut down Tampa Bay's running particularly on first down Frank Montemaliona 
Left inside linebacker showed good pursuit there. And the reason both teams are kind of shutting each other down is really it's like a scrimmage out there. They're going against each other's uh, defense. Both teams run a 3 4, so they know what to expect from each other. Green Bay leading Atlanta 14 to nothing, which is a surprise. Lynn Dickey to Jerry Ellis. Dickey has two touchdown passes in that game. Packers could be for real. Three and one in preseason. They won last week. Eckwood, number 43, in at the running back now, second and nine at the nine, and he's in motion. Wide receivers out to the left, and here's Wilder trying to do it again. And once again, pursuit by Kansas City. And their linebackers and defensive ends have forced beautifully. Art Still, who can clog the middle and can also pursue laterally. Made the fine play there, so now it's third down for Williams. I think John McCann, the Buccaneers, have found out that Art Still's hand is not bothering <laughs> him at all because he is all over the place. And this is one of the things that your defensive lineman has to do if you're going to play with three down linemen. Not only do they have to clog up the middle, they have to roam from sideline to sideline. You saw Chuck Fusina, number 14, with McKay. Kansas City going down to four down linemen and a fifth defensive back in Dombrowski. What does Williams do? Third and 11 on his own seven. He has to be very careful, that's for sure. At three of eight in third down conversions, the Bucks and the pass to Ricky Bell is complete for the first down at the 29 yard line. So Ricky Bell got free and beat Gary Barbaro. Dombrowski made the stop but a well run pattern by the running back Bell and when you talk about being careful you want to throw sideline patterns like this one because if it's going to be incomplete you can just throw the ball completely out of bounds but Ricky as we talked about comes out of the backfield he's worked so hard during the offseason and catching the ball and especially catching it in his hands and he's caught three or four passes this afternoon in his hands a tremendous boost for the offensive unit and it really helps the overall scheme of the Buccaneers good all purpose back he has caught four passes for 50 50 yards. That was a 22 yarder. And the pitch to Eckwood almost bobbled it. And he's hit from behind and might have gotten back to the line of scrimmage if he was lucky. Good pursuit. So Tampa Bay is finding out they can't go wide, just as Kansas City has found out they can't go outside on Tampa Bay. But one thing about going wide against Kansas City is that in the second half of the ball game, if the chief offense is not working at all, then all it's going to do is start to wear down these guys on defense for Kansas City, and then they may be able to pop one. So there is always some kind of plan or scheme for why they're trying to do things. And that big third down play got him out of a big hole. We have 220 remaining. In the first half of a 10 10 game Kevin House in motion Williams looking for Bell again incomplete there were three Chiefs around including cornerback Eric Harris he had Gordon Jones deep but I think the pass was intended for Ricky Bell and practically the same pattern as before it'll go incomplete third down. Well I think Ricky took a little peep to see who was around him and he may have been trying to duck the bullet then because Barbara was coming over and he was really going to let him have it. Doug Williams now facing the nickel defense with four down linemen. He went to Bell who's out of the game right now the last time as Eckwood is in and Eckwood's pretty good as a receiver. Jones split to the left. Kevin House is out and Theo Bell in as well. Three wide receivers. House in motion. Third and ten. He's got enough time. Steps up and he completes his pass to Kevin House. Short of a first down though at the 38 yard line. They are short of a first down and Tampa Bay will have to punt and good coverage by Gary Green not letting House get the extra yard. Exactly right and Green coming up and doing the job that he is supposed to do and even though they got a big gainer out of it it's still short. Big play green here. Coming over and holding him up short. Without a guide, life can be a jungle. Beautiful, but dangerous. And when you're a child alone, with no one to look up to, growing up can be very frightening. La Goomba! But these kids are lucky, they aren't alone. They're part of the Big Brothers and Big Sisters programs supported by United Ways all across the country and by volunteers like these. Hi, I'm Charlie Hanna, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is my wife, Margaret Ann, and this is my little daughter, Kimberly. We're at an outing here in Tampa with some other Big Brothers and Big Sisters, and this is my little sister, Juanette. As United Way volunteers, we both know the importance of being personally involved with young people. Someone to talk to can make all the difference. Oh! 
<laughs> That's why we'd like to say, thanks to you, it works for all of us. The United Way. The preceding message was furnished by the National Football League. Two minutes remaining in the first half. And Tom Blanchard with a fine punt. And J.T. Smith, who returned the last one 50 yards. Penalty markers are way back. Penalty marker down as Smith is tackled at the 31-yard line. Last time Smith returned it, it was 50 yards. The longest punt return against Tampa Bay. Got this back 15 yards, which is pretty good in its own right, following a 47-yard kick. So we're tied 10-10. Two touchdowns on the run in the first quarter. Two field goals here. And it looks like another mm -hmm. penalty against Kansas City puts them even deeper in the hole with that conservative approach of theirs. Who knows what will happen now. Well they had 11 penalties last week against Pittsburgh survived that and won the ball game nonetheless and they've been hit with uh, bad timing on penalties not so much the number so far today but uh, when they happen. Illegal use of the hands number 34 first down. That was Lloyd Burris. And Burris who started the ball game after being beaten a couple of times by Jimmy Giles has been taken out. He goes back in on special teams commits this mistake. It's a tough afternoon for that young man. Well Bill Nelson told us that uh, Tampa Bay very impressed with three of the four defensive backs and you got to work on the rookie. That's your chance. First and ten at the 14 for Kenny. So he's really hemmed in in his own end now. In a 10 10 ball game. Kenny will throw on first down. And he gets it out to McKnight. And McKnight to the 17 yard line, maybe three yards on the play. Hugh Green makes his first tackle of the afternoon. We haven't seen him much, but you're going to see him a lot in this league. He was the number one draft pick out of the University of Pittsburgh. His arrival on the outside for Cecil Johnson inside in the linebacking spot. He was late to camp. He's got things to learn but he has that thing called talent Jim. That's right and he also has Leroy Selman working on that right side too which helps when Leroy is in there. Of course he's out right now with a, a, a tendonitis in his knee. Timeout called for by Tampa Bay because they can smell another possession before the end of this half with 129 to go. So the Bucks have one more timeout remaining. The Chiefs have two and it'll be second and six at the 18 yard line as John McKay trying to get his team back to where they were two years ago. He says we reached the top of the mountain and then all of a sudden got a little complacent and now we have to realize what got us there and that's what they're trying to get again this year. And he, that's exactly right. Uh, his approach to uh, the season this year is not to even talk about what happened in their championship year but to remind the people just a little bit of once you get up on top it's very tough to get up there but it's very easy to slip and fall back down. I want to remind you that Brent Musburger will bring you highlights of the NFL games played today at halftime live from the CBS Sports Desk in New York City as well as a feature on defensive backs and I know Jim Hill for years has felt that they're an underrated lot right. Absolutely. I just hope that there aren't <laughs> any low lights of me and they're getting beat. Uh, you had a distinguished career but I know you like it better up here. That's exactly right. So do we second and six at the 18 yard line following that Tampa Bay timeout they have one to go. And he throws that away and that was a missed pattern. He had Carson deep. And no one really near that pass play. So it's third and six and Kansas City has gained just 50 yards and two first downs on offense. 20 yards rushing and 30 yards passing. When you're as predictable as Kansas City has been throughout the course of the afternoon the deep when the defense knows what you're going to do it makes it very very easy for them to come in with coverages designed to do certain things and that's what uh, Tampa Bay is doing now it's fairly easy for them now. Third and six at the 18. The Bucks looking to stop the Chiefs right here and get their hands on the ball. Kenny out of the pocket. And down at the 22 short of a first down by nearly five yards Bill as Kenny David Logan the nose tackle caught up and Carlos Carson was wide open downfield. So I have to think right now that Kansas City is a bit unraveled on offense. Just a little bit and also the inexperience of Kenny not being able to look over the entire field. Carson is, is wide open but on this play Kenny is looking to the right side instead of looking all over the entire field to spot the wide open man. So this will just come with uh, with more experience. And the Chiefs now 0 for 6 in third down conversion. So with fourth down and they've got uh, they're closer to the first down than we figured about a yard and a half away. 
but they will kick it and Tampa Bay has used their last time out of this first half so they feel with 59 seconds now remaining in the first half they get good field position they can work it close enough for a possible your premium field goal and especially the way that Doug Williams has been throwing the ball this afternoon he can there's always the deep threat but in addition to that the the uh, backs coming out of the backfield have been doing an excellent job of catching so that puts more pressure on Kansas City. Rump has done better each time. 28 39 last time a 46 yard punt. Theo Bell is at the 36 yard line for Tampa Bay. And going back to help Tony Davis. He'll be kicking from inside the 10. Good kick by Grubb. Sends Bell back to the 25. And he's ganged up on a 31 yard line. So the clock will stop on the change of possession with 47 seconds remaining. In the first half and so you know Doug Williams will be going through the air to get things close and we also have to think of the uh, sideline patterns with no timeouts remaining for Tampa Bay. Grupp is an excellent punter not only does he get the ball high and far he kicks at angles and that makes it that time 49 yards and that makes it tough on the receiver because he has to run over and there's a there's a jarring as a jarring effect as you run over and look at the ball as it comes down and it makes it very difficult to catch. Jimmy Giles now is playing at wide receiver up on the line on the left side along with Kevin House and Gordon Jones. So you know Williams will go to the air. Art still is chasing him from behind and drops him up at the 34 yard line. The clock continues to run. So Art still doing it all this afternoon. Caught up Williams from behind as you look at the clock running and Tampa Bay's got to hurry up and they do it without a huddle. Sideline toss to Jones and he'll go out of bounds at the 41 to stop it with that much time remaining. Thomas Howard was covering on the play. So they need, you know, one decent gainer, about 25, 30 yards and stop it. Maybe they can try a last second field goal. I would think they need about 30, 32 yards to even uh, start to consider a field goal. Eckwood and Theo Bell come in and Ricky Bell and Wilder go out. So they may send the whole gang of them out on this one, huh? That's the time remaining and no timeouts remaining for Tampa Bay. Kansas City really covering deep. Penalty marker down. That pass is complete to Kevin House at the 40 yard line and he's tackled at the 37. Penalty is down as Howard and Barbaro made the stop and the penalty is against Tampa Bay with six seconds to go and so you can just about Barring a strange development, wipe it out here. And you can always uh, figure on a holding penalty back in the line of scrimmage like that because the offensive linemen want to protect so much. And really, it's really a holding number 72. And with the new rules, which let the offensive linemen stick their hands out and push away, it really has to be a blatant call of holding to call it like that. That was Ray Snell, the left guard. Actually, if that penalty had not been thrown, the half would have ended. They would not have been able to get another play off. So with six seconds to go, even though the ball is back at the 31 yard line, at least they have one last shot. Gordon Jones, third year from Pitt, 84 wide to the left. Kevin House to the right. And they go to the ground. Wilder on the draw play. And that'll do it for the first half. So the Kansas City Chiefs have not done anything on attack. Doug Williams has done everything through the air. And I think the Kansas City Chiefs are fortunate that they're in a 10 10 tie thanks to their defensive unit. It takes two wheels to have some fun. And you need two more to get the job done. But what can you do with three? Just try the Honda ATC. Eleven years ago, Honda invented the ATC three-wheeler. And ever since, folks have been inventing new ways to use it. Follow the leader. He's on a Honda. Last year, the train company promised you new, better, more energy-fit products. And they're keeping that promise with air conditioning equipment to cut big building energy costs 
up to 20%. Trailer refrigeration units to save 15% on fuel. And for home, train air conditioning like this made 50% more efficient than before. 28 energy fit products in all. Not bad for starters. Here's two good friends. Tonight is kind of special. Hi, Alex. Alex, I'm just coming out to look for you, Greenhorn. We took a little detour. A little detour? A little detour for what? Well, we wanted to say thank you for putting up with us these last couple of weeks. So we stopped at the store and picked up some lone brown. Well, by golly, you city folks are all right. When you want the taste of a truly great American beer, Tonight, let it be low and brown. Uh, we had such a good time. We're coming back next year. Okay, but don't tell my horses that. <laughs> coming up on CBS Sports Saturday, next week, Pleasant Colony continues his quest for Horse of the Year honors as he races for the Marlboro Cup. In two weeks, Roberto Duran continues to fight his way back to the top as he steps into the ring against Luigi Mancillo. Then, in three weeks, Boom Boom Mancini continues the pursuit of his dream as he faces three-time champion Alexis Arguello for the WBC World Lightweight Championship. The excitement, the drama, the dreams, all coming up on CBS Sports Saturday. Welcome back to the news desk in New York. And Irv, we've got some surprises. Right now, the Green Bay Packers have ambushed the Atlanta Falcons. 14-0 at the half. Lynn Dickey has thrown for better than 200 yards and two touchdowns for Bart Starr in this game. Now watch here as Dickey goes to James Lofton for 37 yards. One of the things you want to do, Brent, is try to get a guy like Lofton, who's about 6'4", matched up with the Falcons' corners, who are fairly short. And Lofton's having a field day this afternoon. Now they're going to throw a touchdown pass to number 67, Carl Swanky. Can they do that, Irv? They can do it. He's an eligible receiver. All he has to do is report to the officials. He's normally an interior lineman, and I think to confuse the Falcons secondary. So the Packers are hitting them with a little bit of everything. And of course, the key man now out of that backfield has got to be Gary Ellis, number 31. He must replace the injured Eddie Lee Ivory the rest of the year. So at the half right now, the Packers are ahead of the Falcons, 14-0. And next Sunday here on CBS, a key doubleheader game. We'll show you those Green Bay Packers in action against the Los Angeles Rams. And right now, the Rams are struggling mightily down in the Superdome. Los Angeles Rams, New Orleans ahead. Now, Houston leading Cleveland on a Tony Fritch field goal. The count there is 3 to nothing. Tampa Bay and Kansas City, the game you're enjoying, 10-10, and I would have to agree with Dick Stockton. I think the Chiefs are very lucky not to be behind in this contest. That Doug Williams starting to come along, isn't he? Now, unfortunately, they messed up the snap here, and they smothered Blanchard, and that set up the Chiefs' first touchdown. And it was Teddy McKnight, seven-yard touchdown run, bit of an underrated football player, doesn't get much ink, he scores a lot of touchdowns. James Wilder, a youngster from Missouri, now in that Buccaneer backfield on a pitch out. He'll get a couple of yards in here. And now we're going to show you one of Irv's favorite players, J.T. Smith. Oh, how you love these punt returns. Indeed, I do. But, you know, Marv Levy, the head coach of the Kansas City Chiefs, came into the league as a special teams specialist. He spends an awful lot of time on punt and kickoff returns, and that's the reason why, because you can break a game open with one play in a hurry. So Kansas City and Tampa Bay are all even right now. And of course, that game is at the half 10-10. The Giants and the Washington Redskins, they are struggling mightily down at RFK. No score, no highlight, no excitement in that one. Buffalo over Baltimore 7-0. Ferguson to Cribs, that's the third touchdown that Cribs has scored so far this year for Chuck Knox. And the NFL today will continue on CBS after these messages from your local stations. When the Russians took away the tools of his trade, they robbed him of everything but his soul. Meet him when 60 Minutes leads off with a brand new story this evening on CBS.
Welcome back to the News Desk in New York. And you know, a couple of rule changes before the 1978 season helped boost scoring tremendously around the league. Offensive linemen were given greater freedom in pass blocking. Bumping and pushing by defensive backs were restricted. So the defensive back has acquired new value, and that meant sweeping changes for one team. Each week, defensive backs spend 60 grueling minutes dueling Mercury quick wide receivers. Today, defensive backs are so vital that Seattle spent their first pick on number 45, Ken Easley from UCLA. Easley and Atlanta's Bobby Butler, number 23, are among 12 defensive backs picked in the first round in the past two years. One team in dire need of secondary help was San Francisco, a club that surrendered 29 touchdown passes last year. Boldly, 49er management drafted four defensive backs. Three of them are starters. At left corner from USC, six feet, 205 pound rookie, Ronnie Lott. At right corner from Missouri, at six feet one, 180, rookie Eric Wright. At strong safety from Pittsburgh, six feet, 200 pound rookie, Carlton Williamson. We felt that if we're gonna build a secondary, we might as well put them all together at the same time, start from scratch, and bring all these guys along at the same time. When we looked in the draft, we were looking for men in that 190 plus bracket and over six feet tall, and that's basically what we got. At one point, teams were going with smaller corners, but nowadays you like a bigger man. You know, there's no question that size going for a football makes a big difference. It's also the question of going 16 games and being able to stand up to the contact. We had to find defensive backs who were more pure athletes, kids who could run and jump and leap, and kids who had great speed and great, great recovery ability. I mean, just pure athletes so that they could cover somebody in the open field. Go up in the air, Ron. Pull it down hard. These young athletes have to compete with the Rashads, the Swans, and the Pearsons. They must be agile, quick, smart, and daring if they are to have a chance. You're going against some of the greatest receivers you know, across the country, and uh, each week you got your work cut out for you. They get frustrated sometimes, and you just have to tell them that, you know, if you're going to play defensive back in the NFL, you're going to get beat sometimes. In their debut against Detroit, the rookies played well, but not well enough to win. I think we're growing as a, a unit back there, and uh, I think that our secondary and our defense will be uh, reckoned with throughout the league in a few years. I just hope that I'm around three or four years from now when these guys mature because I think they're really going to be something. Irv, how well did Lott play against the Lions? Played exceptionally well. They had one assignment error back there, which cost them a touchdown, but they're super athletes. All right, Irv, thank you very much. Now let's send you back to the stadium and the game you're enjoying here on CBS. Well, we have a whole second half of football ahead of us in this tie game between the Tampa Bay Bucks and the Kansas City Chiefs, one of whom will be 2-0 after this afternoon, and we'll be back in just a moment. There's a hungry kind of feeling, and every day it grows. You know there's so much more to you than anybody knows. Specialist Kevin Crowley is working with tomorrow's technology in the Army's newest tank. Be the laser determines target range and feeds it to the computer. It's just incredible. There's only one car rental company in the world. Big enough and good enough to be number one for everyone. Hertz. Who else guarantees your final rental charges in advance? Like this. And lets you go right from your plane to your car without stopping at the rental counter. And they never charge for mileage, no matter where you rent the car or where you return it. Whatever you need in a car rental company, there's still only one company you'll ever need. Hertz is number one for everyone. We're Exxon. We're Teresa Hovey, who helps load oil from the Alaska pipeline onto an Exxon tanker. We're Captain Silcox, who takes the oil from Alaska to the Panama Canal. We're the crew of a smaller Exxon tanker, bringing it through the canal to our refinery. We're Captain Worley, in charge of moving products up the Mississippi. We're Tolly Guba, who distributes products to our customers. We're more than 100,000 people working on energy. We're Exxon. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League is sponsored by 
Lowenbrau. When it's time for the taste of a truly great beer, let it be Lowenbrau. The top Americans, American Motors, AMC, Jeep, and Renault dealers. And by RCA's Color Track. Getting the color right is what Color Track is all about. We're back at Arrowhead Stadium in Kansas City, Tampa Bay, in Kansas City, tied 10-10, Dick Stockton and Jim Hill. And before we show a brief look of what happened the last two times these clubs played, the question is, is it the great Tampa Bay defense or is Kansas City's offense just not with it this afternoon? It's a combination of both things, Dick. Tampa Bay playing good, good, solid team defense. However, when your offense is as predictable as Kansas City's offense is this afternoon, then it makes defense even easier and a lot of fun. Do you foresee a change in the second half? I guess not. That's Marv Levy's philosophy, right? Well, I would think that if Kansas City wants to win this ball game, they're going to have to do a few things, and that is change up their offensive philosophy on first down and uh, throw the ball just a little bit more. But they're going to have to get good field position. They've started out so many times that throughout the course of the first half, backed up in their, inside their own 25, 30-yard uh, line. And when you have a conservative offense like that, you really can't uh, throw the ball even if you want to. And Tampa Bay has still not been able to run. No, they haven't been able to run at all. Both these teams play a 3-4 defense, and it's much like a scrimmage. However, I think that with Tampa Bay continuing to run to the outside, you combine that with uh, Kansas City not playing well on offense, their defensive unit might get tired later. Last time the clubs played was a, a banner afternoon for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They might as well be ducks because the game was played in Tampa Bay. It was the last game of the regular season. A monsoon against the Chiefs. It was a 3-0 game, and it wrapped up the Central Division title for the Bucs. The Bucs really like that. They like to play in that kind of weather all the time if they can come away with the win in a championship. And the only points in the game, a 19-yard field goal by Neil O'Donohue right here. An amazing four years in the league. Tampa Bay beat Kansas City 3 to nothing, and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers were the Central Division champions of the NFC, and they went on to play the Los Angeles uh, Rams in the NFC championship game and lost. And then last year, they were 6-10. and 10. They're trying to come back. And Kansas City is, of course, trying to get back to where they were when they were in two Super Bowls. And I think that they probably can. They have a good, good young defensive unit. All right, so the teams are on the field right now as we look at first half statistics, and you can't get any smaller numbers than what the Chiefs are showing. You certainly can, but the, once again, the game is tied at 10-10, and that's the only thing that really matters. Statistics means nothing if you can come away with a win. Chiefs coming out now, and... Garo Yapremian will be kicking off for Tampa Bay. Chiefs going on offense, and if there's going to be any change in the predictable offense, we might see it right now. They have average Kansas City less than two yards on first down. You talked about how important it was for them to pick up some yardage on first down rushing. They have run five times and passed twice on first down plays. They were successful early, and then, of course, uh, the most they have gained on first yard was a two-yard run by Delaney in their fourth possession. They have been so predictable this afternoon that it has been a lot of fun to play defense for Tampa Bay. They're going to have to open it up just a little bit. I know that their thinking is rather conservative, but they have to change. You saw Carlos Carson deep, and Garo Yepremian put the boot to it at the two-yard line. Here's Carson. 31-yard line for Carlos Carson. Andy Hawkins makes the stop, so Bill Kenny comes out once more. Third year from Northern Colorado. Passed for 300 yards last year in a season-ending game against Baltimore, so he can do it. J.T. Smith, number 86. And Henry Marshall, number 89, of the wide receivers. James Hadnot, 48. And Ted McKnight, 22, of the setbacks. And a play action pass on first down. And coming in, storming in, Kohler came in from the defensive line, and David Lewis, or no, it was Hugh Green. Hugh Green came in from linebacker on now, a blitz. Now, the thinking is pretty good here as far as Kansas City is concerned. However, there is a breakdown in the offensive line because as uh, Kenny goes back to pass, he gets hit. The ball is, is not being able to uh, get out and be completed. Look at Hugh Green coming in, and they really put it on Kenny here. 
I see how Kansas City already is trying to make that particular change but up front is where they're having all the problems. Well Matt Herkinoff was with surgery on both knees and uh, he was beaten there by Hugh Green. Stan Rome or J JT Smith and Carlos Carson out to the right second and ten and the pass is caught. Midfield and fumble. Kansas City still has it. JT Smith made the catch fumble it and let's see who picked up the loose ball. It should be a first down for the Chiefs in Tampa Bay territory a 24 yard pickup. It was Carson who caught the ball and Al Dixon the tight end who alertly was there to pick up the ball. Carson is the home run man for Kansas City. He's only 5'10", but he has a great deal of speed. And now Kansas City is opening up the thing a little bit. They're going to have to do that in order to keep uh, Tampa Bay's defense a uh, little loose out there, make a move around and think a little bit, and keep Tampa Bay's offense on the bench. Carson in motion now toward the line. First and 10 at the 48-yard line. Goes back the other way. Ted McKnight with hat not blocking. That's nowhere as David Logan, the nose tackle, just broke through the offensive line and made the play. Tampa Bay doing a superb job stopping the run, and you know they can cover deep. They certainly can, but what you don't want to do now as far as Kansas City is concerned, you don't want to give Tampa Bay a chance to get settled down and make a couple of necessary adjustments. You want to keep the pressure on them. You want to keep them thinking exactly what's going on out there because once they get settled down and get in the groove, they're tough. You know, that last pattern, the completed pass to Car uh, Carson, was exactly what the coaches told us they were looking to do against that zone defense. Second and 11 at the 49. McKnight gets good yardage, and McKnight has a first down inside the 40 yard line. They'll be very close to a first down at the 39. They may have a measurement. Cedric Brown. The free safety number 34 made the stop but look at this hole McKnight heading up to the inside as we talked about him being one of the best uh, inside runners in all of pro football and that's a perfect example why I got a good block there from Tom uh, Condon the uh, right offensive guard and now the Chiefs are starting to move Al Dixon comes in along with Willie Scott number 81 two tight ends on short yardage it'll be third and less than a yard. Leroy Selman has a pulled hamstring. He's out. And of course, Charlie Hanna went out for the offense for Tampa Bay a while back. Here's McKnight. First down for McKnight at the 37 yard line as Norris Thomas came up from his quarterback position to make the tackle. So Kansas City moving the ball, but they had to go to the air to get this far. They certainly did. And now you look at Tampa Bay and you say, well, what can they do in order to offset what's going on if Kansas City is going to continue to pass? They're going to have to blitz just a little bit more. You have five offensive linemen, and they should be able to block five defensive linemen. And Tampa Bay having those wild, crazy linebackers that they have can do that. That was the first third down conversion of the afternoon for the Chiefs. And if they're going to blitz, Kenny may surprise them and go long. First and 10 at the 35. And the pass is intended for Willie Scott, and he was hit hard by Richard Wood, a linebacker. Willie Scott, the first draft choice. They know he can block, but I'll tell you, he took a hit, a welcome to the NFL kind of hit from Richard Wood. Those are the kinds of plays you must have from your linebacker. And actually, on that play, Whitney Paul, number 53, or rather, uh, not, not Whitney Paul, but Hugh Green came in from the left of your screen. He blitzed for Tampa Bay, and that's what really got uh, Kenny confused just a little bit. Second and 10 at the 36. What do you do here? You, you keep it in the air. You have to keep it in the air. Under patterns, under the linebackers. Make them get the deep drops and throw it in front of them. Here's an audible. At the 36, second and 10, up the middle, they catch it this time. So just as Jim Hill said, they're going to work the ball underneath. And they did there to Al Dixon, the tight end, who really has good hands. They're short of a first down by about six or seven yards, however. And the reason they work underneath is because the linebackers drop back so well for Tampa Bay. I mean, they really get good depth. They get back 15, 16, 17 yards, and it makes it pretty tough to throw over them. So you have to take the short stuff. We're going to see the speedy Joe Delaney, the rookie from Northwest Louisiana, number 37 in the game, along with Stan Rome, number 87, a wide receiver who's got pretty good hands in his own right. Kenny right now. His pass for 58 yards, but it's a heck of a lot better than he had at halftime. Third and six at the 32. Chiefs on a third down conversion. First down to Stan Rome inside the 20-yard line. 
And I'm sure people are saying, why didn't they do that earlier? As Kenny is now drilling the ball and moving it through the air. Well, I think what happened is that Marv Levy just saw how things were going bad and probably thought that they would probably get even worse. But watch Kenny throwing right down the middle of the field, and he's doing an excellent job. You look at the nose of the ball, and you can see how the nose is pointing down. That way you know that he really has good rotation on it, and it's going directly where it's supposed to. The Tampa Bay defense, Jimmy, they told us they don't mind that. They're going to say, yeah, you catch the ball under, but we're going to hit you. That's right, and they do hit. <laughs> on the 18, first and 10. 10-10 score. 10-15 to go, third quarter on the reverse. Carlos Carson gets outside Hugh Green, but he doesn't. And I'll tell you, Hugh Green prevented Carlos Carson from going outside, and Neil Colsey also forced the play. So they go with the reverse for the first time today, and they come up empty. This is a sign of a young man talking about Hugh Green now who is really catching on and learning very fast because when action goes away from you and you're on the backside, you're a linebacker, your first priority is to wait to see if there is a reverse. That's exactly what Hugh Green did. He made Carson run laterally, go out of bounds, and that's why it's second and 11 right now for Kansas City. And uh, Tampa Bay may be reading a pass situation here, so we'll look for a blitz. Second and 11 at the 19. Smith 86 wide right, Carson 88 split left. Delaney out of the backfield with Hadnock. Hadnock inside the 10 to the 8 yard line. Close to a first down, they may have it as David Lewis finally made the tackle. Kansas City moving effectively on short patterns, a 10 yard pickup. And not only is this helping the offensive unit, this is doing wonders for the defensive unit, getting a little bit of rest on the sidelines. And what you can look for now is Tampa Bay to come back with some blitzing. They're going to have to do some stunts with their defensive linemen up front. They're going to have to blitz just a little bit and try and confuse the offensive blocking scheme for Kansas City. We're going to have a measurement right now as you look at Bill Kenny, free agent. And I want to remind you, we haven't made much mention of it, but he has bruised ribs. And he was a question mark, which is exactly why, as you see there short, why they thought of bringing Dan Pastorini in for a look, but they did not have to do it because Kenny's ribs have improved enough. Nonetheless, he's still wearing a flak jacket. This is only his fifth NFL start. He had a superb game against Pittsburgh last week, 242 yards and two touchdowns. And uh, he happens to be a guy who wins three out of four times he started. I would describe him right now as a computer quarterback because he's doing exactly what he's told. Third and one, actually less than a yard. Dixon, Scott, and Beckman, three tight ends for the Chiefs at the nine. Hadnock has it. First down, Kansas City, and the Chiefs are threatening to take the lead here with 9-15 remaining third quarter. And running at angles is the way that you run at Tampa Bay, giving your running back an opportunity to run inside. And if he sees it's congested, he can dip it to the outside. And when you have a big, strong running back like a uh, not my goodness, he's 240 pounds. He's like a little pickup truck out there. So now they take out two of the tight ends. Willie Scott, 81, comes in for Dixon. J.T. Smith and Carlos Carson in at wide receiver. First and goal at the six-yard line. Ted McKnight. Good play by the Bucks defense at the five by Neil Colsey. So it'll be second and goal. Chiefs trying to take the lead. And John McKay. Only Bud Grant, Tom Landry, Don Shula, Chuck Nolan, Bart Starr have been coaching longer than, than McKay in the NFL. And his opposite number, Marv Levy, in his fourth year, coached at the Montreal Alouettes in the Canadian League. And with George Allen, the special teams coach with the Redskins. Fourth year for Levy, got a new contract, so that situation settled down. Second and goal at the six. Kenny. Men's final. Bjorn Borg, John McEnroe, two of the best going for it at the U.S. Open Tennis Championships. Borg desperately wants to win the U.S. Open. McEnroe looking to make it three in a row. Or the other, that way you can find the running back to a specific area of the field, or you dribble it right down the middle of the field, hoping that one of the upbacks or one of the people who really aren't used to carrying the ball, that maybe they would get a hold of it. But you certainly do not want to let them get away with a big, big play from their special teams now. Two minutes remaining in the fourth quarter, a 19 to 10 game. Keep in mind that Tampa Bay needs two scores to win the game. 
Both clubs have the full complement of timeouts remaining. That's the drive. The Chiefs with a victory over Pittsburgh last week. And Tampa Bay beating Minnesota. Lowry will kick and James Owens is deep. A short kick. And Owens at the 15. Owens is tripped up. And a big play there for Kansas City by Phil Kansick, the linebacker who is showing well in special teams this afternoon. So Owens brings the ball back to the 28-yard line. They're lucky. He almost broke that one. Next week, CBS doubleheader. Those games, and then Green Bay at Los Angeles. The Rams trying to come back and capture their tough game with the New Orleans Saints. They were well back early, and they've come on strong. The Green Bay Packers drew first blood and had the Atlanta Falcons on the hook. But the Falcons have come back to take the lead in that one. And out in the Los Angeles area, Dan Pastorini is floating around, I understand, too. That's the time remaining. Well, there's no secret, Williams, they haven't been able to rush all day. Uh, Tampa Bay has rushed for 12 yards against Kansas City's defense. So Kansas City stopped Tampa Bay rushing cold. And the Bucks have been able to move it through the air. But that, what kind of patterns, Jim? And that's why it's been so much pressure on Doug Williams. Now he has to go on the shotgun and not waste a lot of time trying to use as much of the sidelines as you can. First and ten at the 29. They go from the shotgun right off the top, and the pass is incomplete in and out of the hands of Eckwood, who was clear at the 40-yard line, and that hurt. And a final score, New Orleans defeated Los Angeles 23-17. to The Rams came close as Hayden hit Denard with 4-10 to go to bring the Rams to within six. But the Saints held, and now L.A. will go back home next week to face the Green Bay Packers on CBS with an 0-2 record. And the controversy will start immediately out there. And you're going to be reporting it during the week. <laughs> be right in the middle of it, yes. Second and ten, that's the time remaining. Chiefs have two timeouts remaining. Bell and Wilder, the backs up the middle. Ricky Bell holds on. First down at the 43-yard line. Tampa Bay has to rush up. They don't want to use the timeout now. Clock running 130 now five remaining in the fourth quarter. Kansas City taking the time getting there and they let the clock run. Williams again up the middle to Ricky Bell midfield. And now we have a whistle. No we don't the clock is still running. It is a little bit surprising to see them throwing right down the middle of the field and not using the sidelines. Ricky Bell can't hold on to that one. He is clobbered by Eric Harris. So the Chiefs now figuring they're going under all the way here. Played Ricky Bell awfully tough, but the clock stops. Well, Bell has played such an important role in this particular series for Tampa Bay that, uh, it, like I said before, I'm kind of surprised that they haven't thrown to the sidelines just a little bit more and try and preserve a little bit more time on the clock than they have. It'll be third and three for Tampa Bay. Ricky Bell has six receptions for 72 yards. T.O. Bell wide left. House to the right. And in the slot is the tight end Giles. Williams to House. Incomplete. Fourth and three. And Tampa Bay will have to go for it here as Gary Green, who's been watching Kevin House like a blanket most of the afternoon, and you can't really shut out a guy with house of speed. He's caught five passes for 96 yards, but I think that's a little deceptive. Green has made the plays when he's had to. And a lot of times, statistics are very misleading because you want to come up with the big plays, and on defense, Green has come up with that this afternoon, whether he has knocked passes down or he's been covering people man-to-man -man all over the place. Fourth and three for Tampa Bay. They need the first down to keep it going, and they don't get it as the pass is deflected by Manamaliona, and the Chiefs will take over on down.
So Kansas City Chiefs stopping Tampa Bay's running game cold. And for a while it looked like the Chiefs couldn't get in the end zone for anything. But Nick Lowry on the strength of four field goals plus a point after touchdown has been the offensive thrust for Kansas City today. Now Up. just sit on it. Under a minute to go. The ball's at midfield. Kenny gives the ball to Hadnot. Good yardage. Hadnot picks up a seven or eight yards. Clock continues to run. The only real mistakes in this game, the problems on the punt plays, the foul ups with Tampa Bay that resulted in the first touchdown by Kansas City. So it is. Tom Blanchard's had a, a pretty tough day back there. One uh, snap from center was low. There was another snap from center, which he could have and probably should have handled just a little bit better. And those have backfired and cost him. Borg and McEnroe coming right up. Don't go anywhere. You'll be seeing what should be another in what has been a series of dramatic and classic U.S. Open men's championship battles. Marv Levy saying, don't even bother. Don't even bother handing the ball off just drop now because the Bucks do have two timeouts remaining as Nick Lowry who has been the man today by the way Nick Lowry has studied government at Dartmouth and his father was in the Foreign Service and Lowry has spent the offseason working in politics at Capitol Hill in Washington a very intelligent young man as we met him yesterday and he's a good football player Atlanta leading Green Bay by 24 to 17. Packers and Rams next week on CBS. Hadnot has a first down inside the 40. And Tampa Bay calls a timeout. They've got one to go. So I believe he's got to be feeling good now. He has to be feeling exceptionally well. That's I think that's probably an understatement in itself because his offense really sputtered and they went backwards in the first half. Second half they really came out and they did a good job. John McKay on the other hand has seen his team play better and he's got to get that feeling back as he has said. Well their problem for Tampa Bay is their offensive line as you mentioned they have they I can't I can hardly believe that they got as few yards as they did rushing against Kansas City and like we talked about earlier how much pressure does that put on your quarterback and your receivers to come through plenty as you said run blocking was the problem Tampa Bay knew they'd have to run to do anything against Kansas City. And Doug Williams I think has handled the pressure very well considering that you know the predictable offense for KC early turned out to be predictable for Tampa Bay late. That's right. That's our score first and ten at the thirty nine yard line. And now Kenny will be happy to fall on the ball. And we'll have a whistle and Tampa Bay has used their last time out with thirty seconds remaining. The executive producer of NFL football is Terry O'Neill. The senior producer is Charles Milton III. Today's game was produced by Ed Gorin and directed by John McDonough. Michael Albanese, associate producer, want to thank everyone and our technical and production staff and hope you've enjoyed this game. Naturally, fans watching down in Tampa Bay will say, well, this was a game to win. Two teams just about at the same level you'd think Jim they're both young both good defensive teams and an opportunity to go two and over oh both clubs. It's been a long time for Kansas City being at this particular stage of the game early in the season and and young Bill Kenny you have to take your hat off to him the young stockbroker in the offseason I'm sure that his stock has gone up with the last uh, couple of games that he's played. Tampa Bay has a big divisional game at Chicago next week. And the same can be said for the Chiefs because they have a very big division battle against the San Diego Chargers right here at Arrowhead Stadium. So that will should be the last play of the game. Tampa Bay out of timeouts and the Kansas City Chiefs in trouble early on offense open it up just enough and with a firm defense did the job and Jim Hill the Chiefs deserved it with a tough defense. They certainly did and this is one of the things that they had to do their linebackers played exceptionally well this afternoon their linebackers had that nasty attitude art still up front people thought that maybe his left arm was bothering him he fooled all of them and they deserve a great great victory that they got. So this is Dick Stockton for Jim Hill where the final score in this game 19 to 10 Kansas City
When the Russians took away the tools of his trade, they robbed him of everything but his soul. Meet him when 60 Minutes leads off with a brand new story, tonight on CBS. This is CBS. human voice could shatter a glass is remarkable that a cassette recording of that voice can shatter a glass is amazing but after 1,000 plays can the same cassette still shatter a glass it can if it's totally new Memorex now even after 1,000 plays reproduction so true we ask is it live or is it Memorex he's walking Dingo Boots, get in step. Gotcha. Out of action. Get the twin action Norelco Rototrack rechargeable razor. Inside three floating heads. Twin action grips and raises hair up, then razors hair off, closer than ever, without mix and cuts or soap and water. The twin action Norelco Road Attract Rechargeable. Because for close shaves, there's no action like twin action. <laughs> Welcome back to the news desk here in New York. We have had still another join from a game that is over. I'll tell you what, let's get everybody up to date on the scores because we've got some finals breaking right now. It's over. The Atlanta Falcons have come back in the fourth period and they have won that game by a score of 31 to 17. Meanwhile, in the Buffalo Baltimore game, it is now 28-3. They have moved into the fourth quarter in that contest. Joe Ferguson through three touchdown passes. Let's go back up now to that Atlanta game. 31-17, the game is over. The Falcons scored all of their points in the fourth quarter of that contest. They were trailing 17 to nothing coming into the fourth period and they just erupted and the Packers had a couple of critical turnovers in that game. One a pass interception and another a fumble recovery. Now the New Orleans Saints down the Los Angeles Rams. 23-17 was the final score there. The Rams now dropped to 0-2 on the season. Houston is now a final. They down Cleveland. 9-3 is the score in that game. Meanwhile, Kansas City over Tampa Bay. 19-10. Nick Lowry goes four out of four in the field goal department in that game. The New York Giants come back. They spotted the Washington Redskins, the first touchdown of the second half of that game. And now it is 17-7, the Giants over the Redskins. Buffalo over Baltimore again, 28-3. And of course, still to come, it's Bjorn Borg and John McEnroe. We hope you've enjoyed the NFL today on CBS, and we hope you sit back now and enjoy some of the finest tennis you've ever seen. For Phyllis and Jimmy and Irv, I'm Brent Musburger. We'll see you a little bit later. CBS's coverage of the National Football League has been a presentation of CBS Sports.